Greetings. This is a short video about a feature in DAS Studio that I recently discovered called the Rigid Follow Node. This feature has been around for a little while now. It was originally introduced in version 4.6 of DAS Studio, but I don't think there's a lot of awareness for it. If you try Googling it, for example, uh, you don't get many results back. It's something that was added primarily for content creators, but it actually has real practical usage even for non-content creation. Uh, for example, anchoring adornments to a figure. If you have looked at my DeviantArt gallery at all, you'll note that I tend to use things like nipple piercings, navel piercings on a lot of the characters that I render. And historically speaking, the way you, this has been done is you have a piercing, they're usually prop items that get loaded in and parented to appropriate bone in the figure. So here we have a nipple piercing that's parented to the left pectoral of the Genesis 3 female. In Genesis 3, the, whoops, sorry. In Genesis 3, the nipple is actually part of the pectoral bone. Uh, older figures, this would have been one of the chest bones. If you go back to V4, she only had the single chest bone. And the problem here is that when you start, so you can see, he, um, this is basically just a default Genesis 3 with a little bit of nipple dialed in to give the piercing something to look like it's a member of or attached to. And if I start posing the figure, so for example, if I move the arm up, the breast deforms as the move, arm moves up and the nipple moves away from the piercing because the piercing is attached to a bone that doesn't really move um, that much relative to the arm movement. The same kind of thing applies, for example, if I uh, change the size or shape of the breasts, you know, dial in some cleavage, etc. The nipple is moving quite a bit, but the piercing does not. And so when posing a figure uh, in a real scene, as opposed to standing here in the standard T pose, you end up doing a lot of work to reposition the piercings when you finally got your, your pose settled on. And if you're like me, every now and then you forget to do that, you start up what you think's your final render and you realize, oh crap, piercings are in the wrong place, I gotta fix that. Be nice if they actually followed the nipple, wouldn't it? Well, that's what the rigid follow node does. And so, as in, to show you how to do this, we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to change to wire shaded so we can see the geometry. I'm going to switch to the Geometry Editor tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the four quads that make up the tip of the nipple. And then I'm going to do Grow Selection Once. And I've found that with Genesis 3, this is what you want. With Genesis 2 female, you want to grow it twice. Um, and we'll see why in just a moment here. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say geometry assignment, create rigid follow node. And we will name this left nipple follower. And you can see we've gotten the lines that look kind of like a null node. And we now have this new uh, node under Genesis 3 female. And the reason that we had selected the extra polygons is that the position and orientation or rotation of this new node is automatically calculated by Studio and will follow the um, shaping. You can see it's moving. Um, and 
you'll note here that it's currently aligned more or less to world alignment. If we had selected just one of these, because of the way Studio calculates, the node that it generated would be aligned to try to be flat with this one polygon, and so the orientation would be off. And so when we go and we do things like we take the nipple piercing, you'll note that I've got parent items in place turned on, and I move this to the follower. The piercing parameters for things like Z rotation and so forth are actually still more or less aligned with the how we think they should be aligned. So when I go and I say, all right, let's apply a little bit of implant and we could do some cleavage. And if we raise the arms up, you'll note that the piercing is following the nipple. But when we move the arm up, because the shaping or defor deformation of the uh, breast has caused it to rotate a bit, it's also made the nipple rotate or the piercing rotate a little bit. And so again, ha on having it be, well, Z is what I'm used to for correction. And I can move this in a little bit. And with just a couple of minor adjustments here, 10 seconds, not even, I've got the piercing more or less in shape for having the arm raised. Whereas if I had done this without parenting to this follower node, I probably would have spent five or 10 minutes trying to get the piercing properly realigned with the nipple. I admit I tend to be a little on the um, obsessive compulsive side when it comes to getting them aligned just so. Um, and so this is a real time saver because as you move and change the shape, especially with when you start doing a lot of posing, um, you don't have to worry about the piercings drifting away from the figure or drifting inside the figure. And we can do this as well for things like a navel piercing. So we'll come down here, zoom in a bit. Now again, through a little bit of prior experimentation, I've found that with Genesis 3 female, by selecting these six faces, when we do create rigid, and we will say navel follower that we again get a follower that is more or less aligned rotation-wise with world space. So when we take the navel piercing and we move, well, before I do that, um, to show you what happens without it, if I go, for example, waist side to side, you can see that it is drifted away from the center of the navel. And so now if I change the parenting to the follower, and I go back and I do that same thing. It's actually sticking with the center point. And again, we're going to need a little bit of adjustment for the rotation, but because the rotation follows what we expect, instead of being a wonky orientation, you're not editing X when you think you're editing Z or should be editing Z because the rotations line up. And then one other quick tip for people who want to experiment with this, you'll note that when I have created these followers, I had the root node of the figure selected. And that's because, as an example, if we come in on the right nipple and I select the right pictorial, pectoral rather, and again, I'm going to do the four tips and I will say grow selection and I will say create rigid follow node and this is the right nipple follower. You can actually see it's a little off. If you look in relation to where it placed it on the left nipple 
And that's because things like morph that scale parts of the body um, seem to affect where Daz calculates and places the follower node. And that's obviously not what you want, especially like, for example, if you come up here and you do like what um, measure metrics does where they attach, they make a follower on the head to be able to measure the height of the figure. So we will call this head top follower. And here it's seems to be pretty well lined up, but I've seen with some of the figures I've experimented with that have morphs that do some major scaling and so forth, that that follower ended up a good eight to 10 centimeters above the actual top of the head. And that's really not what you want. Same thing with the breast here. You don't really want your piercing to be in a lump relative to the side of the nipple. You want it to have it be centered in the nipple. So by creating these followers with the root of the figure selected, any of the scalings that are applied by a morph um, or by going into a node and like scaling the chest down or whatever manually, they won't affect the positioning, the auto positioning of these followers, that they will be what you expect them to be and can rely on. So I hope that has been useful. Um, this is going to be a big time saver for me, I know, since I, as I mentioned, tend to use things like nipple and so forth, piercings quite a bit. Um, and I hope that you find this to be useful for any renders you do that make use of adornments and so forth. Cheers.